Hi everyone, this is the second video in a series of three that outlines the prerequisite knowledge for the IB Maths Standard course. In this video we're going to be going through manipulating algebraic expressions, then we'll look at index laws, expanding, factorising and finish off with algebraic fractions. When we multiply algebraic terms, we put the sign, the positive or the negative sign first, then any numbers next, and then the pronumerals in alphabetical order. So if we want to do minus 2 times a times 6, that would be written as negative 12a. What about this one? Negative 3m times negative 2n. So a minus times a minus makes a plus. 2, 3 is a 6, and then mn. And we actually don't need to write the positive sign there. This one, 4m times 2n times m. So the numbers first, 4, 2 is 8. m times m is m squared, and then n. When we divide algebraic terms, we cancel pronumerals, numbers, and signs that are the same. And we're always careful to use the fraction notation rather than the divide by sign. So for example, 12xy divided by 6x, we're going to write that like this instead of with this divide by sign here. Now we can see from this that those x's will cancel. And also the 6 and the 12 have a common factor of 6. So 6 into 12 goes twice. 6 into 6 goes once. Now we've just got to decipher what's left. On the top I've got 2y, and on the bottom I've got 1, which I don't need to write. So our answer is 2y. So in this case, 6abc divided by negative 9c. Use this notation instead. What can cancel here? The c's cancel. And 6 and 9 have a common factor of 3. So 3 into 6 goes twice. 3 into 9 goes 3 times. What's left? I've got 2ab on top and negative 3 on the bottom. But you probably remember from the last video, we don't write a negative on the bottom of a fraction. It's going to float up. It can either sit in front of the 2 or in front of the actual fraction itself. So there's our correct answer, negative 2ab on 3. We can only add or subtract like terms. And by like terms, I mean they have to have the same pronumerals. So these x's are the same, they're like terms, and these y's are also like terms. So 3x plus 4x is 7x, 2y minus 1y is 1y. So 7x plus y is the answer. In this case here, a common error is to say 6a plus 3a and get the signs mixed up. And if you have the tendency to do that, here's a little trick. The sign in front of the term belongs to that term. So if we circle from the back, it shows you who belongs with what. So this is a 6a, this is a negative 3a. 6a minus 3a is 3a. 2b plus b is 3b. And there's our answer. What about this one? They are like terms. Multiplication with multiplication order is not important. So this is actually xy. So this is 6xy plus 3xy is 9xy. And then this one here. This one looks rather disgusting. Do we have any like terms there? Well, we've got this one, 3x squared y and 7x squared y. But it's different to xy squared and it's different to x squared y squared. So the only two we can collect together are these two. So our answer is 10x squared y plus 2xy squared plus 2x squared y squared. There are three index laws that we need to know. The first one says that when we multiply pronumerals or numbers that are the same, we add the indices. The second one says when we divide pronumerals or numbers that are the same, we subtract the indices. And the third one says when we raise a power to a power, we multiply the indices. Here's a couple of examples. So in this first question, because we're multiplying x's together, we're going to add those indices. That's going to give us 8. And then we're going to divide by x to the power of 4. So that'll be 8 take away 4 is 4. So our answer here is x to the power of 4. In this case, everything in the brackets has to be cubed. So we've got to do this 2 cubed as well. 
2 cubed is 8. And then I'm raising a power to a power, so I'm going to get x to the power of 6, and then power to a power here, so that'll be y to the power of 9. So 8x to the power of 6, y to the power of 9. And finally, you can get questions like this where you've got a couple of things to do. We could do this multiplication first, or we can do the subtraction of the indices. I'm going to do this one first. So this is x to the power of 5 divided by x squared. So I'm going to subtract those indices. That gives me x cubed all to the power of 4. I'm raising a power to a power. So that's x to the power of 12. And there are three consequences of those index laws. Here's the first one. Anything to the power of naught is 1. The second one is that a negative index means 1 over the x to the n, or it means the reciprocal. So if I say x to the negative n is x to the negative n over 1, you can see how that's been flipped upside down. And the third consequence is the fractional index. So here if I've got x to the power of 1 on n, that's the nth root of x. Here's some examples. So this first one, 2x to the power of naught. So anything to the power of naught is 1. That's only that bit there. Okay, the 2 isn't raised to the power of naught. In fact, the 2 is raised to the power of 1. It's just we don't write that. So this is going to go, that's going to be equal to 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Remember how I said to the power of negative 1 means the reciprocal? So this is just going to be 3 halves. If you want to check that out on your calculator, you've actually got a reciprocal button. So x to the power of negative 1, it's above the bracket. It's not very clear in my picture, I'm sorry. So put in any number, put in the 2 thirds if you like, and then do shift bracket, and it'll flip it upside down and give you 3 halves. 8 to the power of a third is the cube root of 8, which is 2. And then finally, you can get a mixture, this sort of question here, 27 to the power of negative 2 thirds. It doesn't matter which order you do this in. You could square it first, you could do the cube root, you could take the reciprocal. I'm going to turn it upside down, take the reciprocal first, so that gets rid of the negative. Now I'm going to do the cube root. The cube root of 27 is 3, so that leaves me with 1 on 3 squared, which is one ninth. So I'd encourage you to do that a different way and just prove to yourself that you get exactly the same answer. When we're expanding brackets, the term in front of the brackets is multiplied by every term inside the brackets. So here it means I'm going to multiply the 4 by the x and then multiply the 4 by the 3. And so answer will be 4x plus 12. In this case, I've got three things in the brackets. That's okay. I'm just going to multiply the 2x by the x squared, and then by the 3x, and then by the 1. 2x times x squared is 2x cubed, plus 2x times 3x is 6x squared, plus 2x times 1 is 2x. Be careful of negatives in front of brackets. They change the sign in the brackets. Let's have a look at why that is. This is negative 2 times x, that's negative 2x, that bit's easy. And then negative 2 times positive 4, which is going to give me a minus. Okay, minus 2 times plus 4 is minus 8. See how the sign has changed? What about this one? What does that even mean? This is a 1 here. Remember how we don't often write the 1s? So this is minus 1 times x, that's minus x. Minus 1 times minus 5 is positive 5. So the minus goes through the brackets and changes all the signs in the brackets. When we're expanding two sets of brackets, we use FOIL, which stands for first, outer, inner, last. And so here's an example, and this is what it is. So first, then outer, inner, last. Okay, so x times x is x squared plus 3x, plus 2x, plus 6. Quite often we can collect the middle two terms together. So our answer here is x squared plus 5x plus 6. Let's do another one. So first is going to be 2x squared, then 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. The middle term will be negative 1x or negative x, and the last will be positive 5. Collect the two terms in the middle together, 
be careful of this, this just doesn't make a positive here. This is minus 10x minus another x, so it's minus 11x. We have special cases, the perfect squares. x plus 3 or squared just means x plus 3, x plus 3. Doing FOIL on that, we get x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. Collect the two middle terms together we've got x squared plus 6x plus 9. There is a shortcut with this if you want to learn it. This is the first term squared. This is 2 times the first times the last. And this is the last term squared. So when I see a perfect square like this, I go first one squared, that's x squared, plus 2 times 3 times x is 6x, plus 3 squared, which is 9. Which gives it in one go. Here's another one 3x minus 1 all squared. So first one squared is 6, sorry, is 9x squared minus this time 2 times 1 times 3x is minus 6x plus the last term will always be positive because we're squaring this negative. So negative 1 all squared is positive 1. So 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. And the other special case is the difference of two squares. In this case, we have the same terms, but different signs, a positive and a negative. If you recall from when we were doing thirds, the middle terms will cancel out. So we're going to get x squared minus 3x plus 3x minus 9. And so it simplifies to x squared minus 9. And this is why it's called the difference of two squares, because that's a square. And that's a square, that's 3 squared, and that's the difference. What about this one? When we recognise that it's going to be the difference of two squares, we actually don't need to do the outer and the inner. We can just do the first and the last. So this will be 16x squared minus 1. Factorising is the reverse of expanding, and we can take out numbers or pronumerals or signs. Let's have a look at this. So in this case, I have a common factor of 2 and also x. So I'm going to bring 2x out the front. Then I'm going to say to myself, 2x times what makes 6x squared y? Well, I'm going to need 3, I'm going to need another x, and I'm going to need a y. And then I say 2x times what makes 4x? I need 2, don't I? And there it is. And we can always expand out at the end to see if we're right. Negatives can be factorised out. So for example, minus 4x minus 8. So a common factor of both terms in this case is negative 4. So let's bring that out. Negative 4 times what makes negative 4x? That's going to be x. Negative 4 times what makes negative 8? So just like before where I said that the sign will change from the brackets into this expanded expression, we want this to be a plus. And four twos are eight, so I want it to be positive. So let's just check it. Minus four times x is minus four x. Minus four times positive two is minus eight or negative eight. An easy way to factorize into two brackets is to take a common factor out of each pair of terms. So we might have something like this. And I can see that a is a common factor of the first two and three is a common factor of the second two. Once I've got that, I can see that x plus two is a common factor of each term. So that it's gonna come out the front outside of a plus three. Okay, so I've gone from four terms into two brackets. Let's have a look at what happens when we expand this so that we can develop a theory for how to factorise them. So when we do FOIL, we get x squared minus 4x minus 2x plus 8, which gives us x squared minus 6x plus 8. So this first one is the product of the first two terms here. The next one is the sum of the outer and inner products. So that one there and this one in the middle. And then this last term is the product of the last terms. So given that piece of knowledge, let's have a look at the four different types we can get. 
And this is based on whether there are pluses in both brackets, minuses in both brackets, a minus then a plus, or a plus then a minus. These two sort of follow the same rules, and these two follow the same sort of rules. Okay, and we're going to have a look at that and see what they are. Okay, so let's start with these first two that I said were very similar. These two have a positive last term, and that's the product of the last terms. Do you remember? In the brackets. So these two. It's easy to put the first terms in because I'm just looking at something times something makes x squared. And so that's just going to be x and x. So that's the starting point. Now I'm going to look at this last term. The only way to get a positive product is to multiply two positive numbers together or two negative numbers together. So I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that in this case the signs are going to be the same in the brackets. And in fact in this case they're going to be plus plus. And in this case, they're going to be minus minus. OK, signs the same because the last um, terms, the product is positive. So now we're going to have a look at the middle terms. And the middle term is the sum of the outer and inner products. Do you remember that? So it's going to be this times this plus this times this. So I want factors of six that add to give 5, or which two numbers multiply to give 6 that add to give 5? And they have to be 2 and 3, don't they? Let's just check it. x squared, 3x plus 2x is 5x, 2 times 3 is 6. It's going to be the same numbers here as well. Okay, it's just when adding, see how I've got add here? We're adding it in a negative direction. So minus 3x minus another 2x is minus 5x. Let's look at the other two. So in this case, they have a negative last term. And that means the signs in the brackets will be different. Does that make sense to you? Because I've got to multiply a negative by a po positive to get a negative in each case. And what's going to happen with this middle term is it's not going to be a sum anymore. It's going to be a difference because we're changing direction. So I'm going to have a positive number there minus something. So once we know that, we now look at the middle term. So in this case, we're going to find a difference. And we're going to ask ourselves which two numbers multiply to give 6, but have a difference of 1. And that's going to be 3 and 2 again, isn't it? Because 3 and 2 have a difference of 1. Now, it's really important which way around I put the 3 and the 2 in these brackets. So if I do 3x minus 2x, I get positive x which is that very first one, isn't it? If I do minus 3x plus 2x, I get minus x, which is that one. So that means in the top bracket here, I want a positive 3 and a negative 2. And in this case, I want a positive 2 and a negative 3. OK, so let's solve this one. Factorise x squared plus 9x plus 8. So I'm going to write down my two brackets like this with the x in the front. Look at the last term. It's positive. This means the signs are the same. Look at the middle term. It's positive, so both of the signs are pluses. And that middle term is going to be a sum. So we're going to ask ourselves to find numbers that multiply to give 8 and add to give 9. So what two numbers multiply to give 8 and add to give 9? It must be 1 and 8 doesn't matter which way around they go, so there it is, factorised. Let's check it out. x times x is x squared. This is 8x plus 1x is 9x, and the last term will be 1 times 8 is 8. OK, what about this one? Look at the last term. It's negative. This means there will be different signs in the bracket. It also means that the middle term will be a difference. So we need to find two numbers which multiply to give 12 and have a difference of 1. Oh, well, that's 4 and 3, isn't it? Which way round do we want them? Do we want positive 4 and negative 3 or negative 4 and positive 3? Let's see. We want this to actually end up being negative. So we want the bigger number to be negative. So we want negative 4, positive 3. 
So here's some questions if you'd like to practice them. So pause the video and write them down and have a go and then come back and I'll give you the answers. Here are the answers. Okay, let's move on. Special cases, like we talked about before, perfect squares. So here's a perfect square. In this case, we're just going to do it exactly the same as what we've been doing before. Look at the last term. Both have to be positive. So I'm looking for factors of 9 that add to 6. They are 3 and 3. And the only difference is we'll write it like that. In this case, again, the numbers, the signs will be the same in the brackets, but they'll both be negative this time. I want factors of 25 that add to 10. And that's 5 and 5. And so there's our answer. With the difference of two squares, it'll look like this. So you can effectively say I want factors of 9 that have a difference of 0, because you've got no middle term. Or you can just recognize that that's going to be the difference of two squares. So it's going to be x plus 3 x minus 3. Let's have a look at it. x squared minus 3x plus 3x. That cancels out. Minus 9. What about this one? So in this case I'm going to do the square root of this to put in the front and then I'm going to do the square root of this to put in the back and then change the sign. So it's going to be 2x plus 5 in brackets, 2x minus 5 in brackets. Okay, now at this point, you should pause the video and make sure that you are really confident with what we've learnt so far before we move on to these ones. Okay, so when the x squared term has a coefficient, remember that's the number in front of the pronumerals, has a coefficient other than 1, it is more difficult to factorise. Firstly, have a look and see if the coefficients have a common factor. So if you get something like this, 2 goes into all of those. And that's much easier than having to do some of the methods that I'm going to teach you in a second. So I'm going to factorise out the 2, which gives me that. And look, we've got our friend here, x squared plus 5x plus 6. And I know that's x plus 2, x plus 3. So if we've got a common factor, that you know, saves a lot of time. If there isn't a common factor, there are three common methods used. The method that I was taught was just to factorise straight into the brackets. I'll show you that. The cross method, which is the method that I usually teach. And then there's the product sum factor method, sometimes called the Sydney Harbour Bridge method. We use the method of straight into the brackets when it's an easy question. And by that I mean there's not very many factors. Like if you look here, the only factors of 2x squared are 2x and x. And the only factors of 3 are 3 and 1. We know the signs are going to be different. Okay, I can't put that in yet because I'm, that'll be the last thing that I do. I've got to get this 3 and the 1 around the right way. So if I put the 3 here and the 1 there, I'm going to get 6x and 1x. And I am looking for a difference. And that's actually it, isn't it? I need the 3 here and the 1 there. Just have a quick look at that. 2 3 is a 6 and 1x. Now I need negative 5 as the difference. So I need negative 6, positive 1. Let's check it out. 2x times x is 2x squared. Minus 6x plus 1x is minus 5x. Positive 1 times negative 3 is minus 3. Here's another one. Again, it's a nice easy one. The only factors of this is 3x and x. The only factors here are 5 and 1. We know, we know the signs will be the same and they'll both be pluses. So this will be 3x and x. So which way around am I putting the 5 and the 1? If I put the 5 here and the 1 here, I'm going to get 15x and 1x. I'm looking for a sum here. That's not going to be it. So the 5 needs to go here. So... 3x and 5x is 8x, and this last one is correct as well. 5 times 1 is 5. Okay, let's look at a harder one. Now, in this case, we've got more than one set of factors here. This one's okay, this side. But this has got 4x and x and 2x and 2x. So this is a cross method. cross method. We put a cross. On this side, we put the factors of 4x squared. 
And you can see how I've got 4x and x, and then x and 4x. I've turned it upside down, and I need to do that in order to get the number of combinations that I need. On this side, I'm going to put the factors of 3. Now we cross multiply until we can find a difference of 4. Why is it a difference? Because this is a negative. Signs are different. All right, 4x times 1 is 4x, and 3x. That has a difference of 1, it's not that. Here I've got x and 12x. That's got a difference of 11x. Must be this one. That's 2x and 6x. Yes, that has a difference of 4. These are our two brackets. See the 2x, 3, 2x, 1. Now I've just got to get the plus and the minus around the right way. I want negative 4. So let's have a look what we've got. We've got the 2x there and the 6x here. I want the 6x to be negative. So that's the minus there. And there's our answer. Okay, the other method that's a very common method is the product sum factor method or the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And you start off by multiplying the first and the last coefficient. So there's your Harbour Bridge, <laughs> if you like, um, which is 12. Now we do everything the same way. We say the signs are going to be different. I'm looking for a difference. But in this case, I want factors of 12 that have a difference of 4. Factors of 12 that have a difference of 4. That's 6 and 2, isn't it? All right, let's set it up. We're going to split the middle term into 2. It's going to be 6x and 2x. But I want it to be negative 4x, so I'm going to go minus 6x plus 2x. This is the tricky bit. Okay, so I did all of this so that I could get that split out. Now we factorise the first two, factorise the second two, and then join it together. So a common factor here is 2x outside of 2x minus 3, and that actually can't be factorised, so it's just plus 1 outside of 2x minus 3. This is a common factor. Bring it out the front, and there it is. It doesn't matter which method you choose. Pick one and, and just practice it until you're good at it. Um, all of them have got their problems. If you remember this particular method, sometimes people get mucked up in here. Uh, it can be easier than the cross method when you've got lots and lots of different combinations, but it also can be difficult if this number gets too big because it's hard to try and figure out the factors that have a difference there. So sometimes having a couple of different methods under your belt is not such a bad idea. All right, let's move on to algebraic fractions. So when we multiply fractions, we multiply across the top and across the bottom. So this is going to be x squared on 15. And in this case, we've just got to be careful of these brackets. We don't actually write these brackets here because of the long divide sign. But when I join those together, I'm going to need to put them in. So it's going to be x plus 5 in brackets x minus 5 on 6. Sometimes we can cancel. And we can cancel anything on the top with anything on the bottom, provided this sign here is a multiply. If it's a plus minus time, sorry, plus minus or divide, you can't cancel. But I can cancel that with that and this with one of those. So those two cancel, that's easy. And this is what I do here. I cancel one of those, sorry, this one here with one of those there. What's left here? I've got a 2 over x plus 1. Do you remember how to divide fractions? we multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal means to turn it upside down. So the divide becomes a times and that x on 5 becomes 5 on x. Now we can multiply across the top and across the bottom here, but those x's cancel. Let's do that first. What's left? 5 thirds. In this case here, multiply by the reciprocal. What can cancel? Those x plus 5's cancel and the threes. What's left up the top here? It's not zero, don't make that mistake. Here I've gone three into three goes one. I just didn't write the little one there. So it's one over two, it's a half. 
sometimes we might get questions like this. Don't be tempted to do this. X into X. This goes there and 2 into here goes 3 times. It's absolute rubbish. Okay, I'm going to rub it out. We can't do that because we've got all those nasty pluses all over the place and that'll stop us. We can only cancel things that are multiplied. So our only course of action here is to factorise, but we've seen that top factorisation before. It's x plus 2, x plus 3. Now we can cancel. This is a multiplication sign in here. So those x plus 2s can cancel and our answer will be x plus 3. What about this one? It's a bit nasty, isn't it? Here I've got the difference of two squares, so that's x plus 1, x minus 1. I can factorise this too. I want diff uh, numbers that multiply to give 3 that have a difference of 2. So that's 3 and 1. Furthermore, I want plus 3, minus 1. So there's the factorisation of that. And there's the factorisation of that. All right, what can cancel over here? Well, how about this? x minus 1 times x minus 1 is the same as x minus 1 or squared. So they can go. What else can cancel? Those x plus 1s? Yep. What's left? x plus 3. This is a very interesting one and it's worth learning. I've got 1 minus a all over a minus 1. And actually that whole thing can be simplified down to negative 1. This is a little trick. Factorise the negative out of the top. So have a look there. I've got 1 minus a. I'm just going to rewrite that as minus a plus 1. So if I want to take the negative out of that, then I change all the signs in the brackets. And now look at what we've got. Same thing, top and bottom. They cancel. A minus 1 into A minus 1 goes 1 time. So our answer here is negative 1. Adding and subtracting. This is the last thing that we've got to go through. We have to have a common denominator. Right. Easiest way to make a common denominator there is to multiply them. So 2, 3 is a 6. So if I make this into 6 down here by multiplying the bottom by 3, I need to multiply the top by 3. If I make this into 6 by multiplying the bottom by 2, I need to multiply the top by 2. So what have we got? 3x over 6 plus 2x over 6. Now that the denominators are the same, I can add across the top. gives us 5x over 6. Now in this case here, I'm not going to multiply the bottoms because I'm going to find the lowest common multiple. Multiplying these two to get 8 and changing them both to 8 is overkill because I only actually need to change this one by multiplying top and bottom by 2. That'll change it to quarters. That's because the lowest common multiple of these two things, two numbers, is 4. So I'm going to multiply the bottom here by 2 and I'm going to multiply the top by 2. Look how I'm putting those brackets in. So I've got 2 outside of x plus 1 all over 4 minus x plus 2 all over 4. Now there's a very big mistake that people make here. There's brackets here too. And that negative there is in front of that bracket. So I'm just going to write the answer here. Let's have a look how I got this. I've expanded that out. That bit's easy. 2x plus 2 minus x minus 2. Do you see that? Really common mistake is to put a positive here. All right from here on we've got 2x minus x is x and I've got 2 minus 2 that's 0. So our answer here is x on 4. Okay, last one. So in order to do this question, we need a common denominator. And so we need to find the lowest common multiple of these two things. Well, this is just too horrendous as it is. So we're going to factorise that. It's x plus 2, x plus 1. Now we can see that this one's got an x plus 1 and an x plus 2. This one over here has only got an x plus 1. So is it reasonable to say 
that I want to multiply this denominator here by x plus 2. Now it's the same, isn't it? But whatever I do to the bottom, I need to do to the top. Can you see how I'm putting these brackets in? That's a plus. All right, we have a common denominator. Add across the top. Now expand, and that will give us x squared plus 7x plus 14. It's unlikely that that numerator would factorise, but let's just have a quick check anyway. Are there any factors of 14 that add to 7? No, there aren't. So that won't factorise, and we don't need to expand this out either. We're actually just going to leave it like that.